Last summer, when Cindy and I were driving around the United States, we encountered extreme weather on numerous occasions. From South Dakota through Mississippi, Missouri, we drove by Joplin, Missouri that was hit by a F5 tornado that killed over 100 people. We saw the damage done. We are talking about extreme weather, not just tropical storms, heavy downpours, hail, uh, all the way around. And then when we continued our trip into Texas and New Mexico, Arizona, heat wave and drought, record heat waves. This is a common occurrence around the planet right now. Extreme weather, not the normal patterns, extreme. Scientists are talking about global warming. And what's interesting about this right now is that in Canada, British Columbia, there are hearings taking place in Kitimat about a pipeline that is to take dirty Alberta tar sands oil to Kitimat to be put aboard super tankers, hundreds of them each year, and shipped to the hungry Asian markets to put more fossil fuel and carbon into the atmosphere. Now, Canada's Harper government has labeled environmentalists radical environmental elements. Yep, the Harper government is labeling Canadians as radical because they oppose a pipeline. They oppose progress. They oppose jobs and economic well-being. Today, NASA says that Canada is a hotspot of ec ecological change. That within the next hundred years, we're going to face major changes. Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta. But that's just radical thinking. We gotta think about jobs and money because that's what everything is about. Forget about our planet, forget about the environment. And the Harper government is also very annoyed that there are people outside of Canada who give to charities in Canada, environmental charities like the Sierra Club, Greenpeace and others. And that they should have no say in what goes on in Canada, because what goes on in Canada is strictly for Canadians. Yet that same Harper government didn't hesitate to bring Canada into a war in Libya, Afghanistan or wherever. Because I guess what happens in those countries does affect Canada. Although I don't know how. It's not like any of those countries have ever threatened us. But the fact of the matter is, is that our oil production, our dirty oil, is threatening the planet. Global warming is a fact. Catastrophic. Extreme weather is a fact. It's taking place already this century. Hurricanes have wiped out New Orleans, Cancun, Mexico, typhoons in the Philippines, Vietnam, China, floods, drought is impacting people. Now just the other day I heard Dr. David Suzuki on television and Dr. David Suzuki is uh, the commentator, the host of The Nature of Things and is one of Canada's top environmentalists and he was very uh, ticked off by what he heard from our government, specifically that environmentalists are radical. What he said is that environmentalists are conservative because they want to have the answers. They want to know what's going to happen before they commit to it. Very conservative attitude while governments and big oil, big business are radical. They want to push through anything and everything without knowing the outcome or consequences. The Nature of Things has done many programs on uh, our environment. I mean, Dr. David Suzuki f became involved in it during the making of the show. Back in the 80s, uh, he was in, on Vancouver Island and he saw what clear-cut logging was doing. And at that time, listen to this, at that time, logging industry was saying, well, we got to do this, we got to do it. It's because of economy, jobs, everything. There's nothing else that we can do. But they found a way. I remember environmentalists in the United States putting a stop to logging of the uh, forest because of the spotted owl. All sorts of different things and the world didn't end. 
What will end the world is if we continue on this path of poisoning and destructing or dis the destruction of our planet. That will end our planet for sure. Now, if today NASA were to come out and say that in six months there's a major meteor that's going to impact Earth and it would be catastrophic to the people of the planet, you'd see every country get together, bring their best scientists, their military, everyone would stand together to try and save the planet. Because that is something concrete. It's going to happen on a specific time. It's going to be an impact. But we have pollution. Pollution of the air. Pollution of the water. We have global warming taking place at a slow pace. We don't really see it. Many of the people aren't really concerned because it doesn't happen at a fast pace. And some of the events when they happen, well, they're over pretty quickly. You have a tornado hitting Joplin, Missouri. The devastation is phenomenal. But you might not see anything there again for years to come. Rivers that are polluted with fish turning up dead, well, they might happen out of sight, out of, out of mind. How many people can name rivers in northern British Columbia? Yet this pipeline is going to cross 700 of them. Many of them salmon streams. And even if they're not salmon streams, they're clean, pristine water. When the oil tankers are coming in, do you know that the coast of British Columbia is a major migration route for whales? And already in the open ocean there are whales being hit by ships. Killer whales, otters are all at risk should an oil spill take place on our coast. But again, if you're living in uh, Ontario, Quebec, do you really care? Or if you're living elsewhere in this planet, do you really care about that? I mean, I know you have your own problems, and that's just what most governments and business are counting on. The land being polluted, same thing. It's just a slow, agonizing death of the planet. And what's really sad is that by the time we notice it, it won't be we. We'll be long gone. It'll be our children and our grandchildren. And they might not have an option. They might not have a better future to aim to because of our inaction today. Shame on governments like Canada's Harper government that wants to contribute more to the global detriment of our planet. Putting more carbon, fossil fuel into China's hands. I mean, does anyone out there remember what China's city looked like during the Olympics when they had cameras and you couldn't look down the block because of the pollution? India, same thing. Why don't the governments get together and figure out a clean energy burning vehicle? Maybe hydrogen or whatever, not electricity. Because electricity is just another way that you're going to have to create power, uh, whether it's nuclear or uh, hydro or whatever, to power cars. But come up with some real alternatives. Start cleaning up the air, not just contributing to the pollution. It's affecting us all, Harper. All people have to be concerned. It doesn't matter what country they're in about what happens in Canada, the USA, China, India, around the world. At least that's the way I see it.